Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk. Tonight, I've got Ian Lee on the line. Ian, are you there? I'm right here, James. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. It's great to have you in the room and uh, also on the call. So uh, tonight, we're going to be chatting about newsletters. It's uh, an interesting topic because uh, there's, there's always this debate out there that I see sometimes in the forums, and you know, I know we get questions at the support desk, and it, it's something that I've thought about over the years is this whole concept of should I start an email newsletter for my website or should I not? And uh, I know you're, you're, you're big time into the newsletter arena, so we're going to have a, a good chance to chat about that uh, this evening. My, uh, my basic thoughts have always been over the years is I've, you know, it's always, you know, I try to always tie it back to the visitor personally if it's going to benefit the visitor and it's part of your, your, your business model and something you want to do, then, then by all means, jump into it. So uh, let me give you a little intro so people know who you are. Uh, Ian, is the, uh, he's the founder of the Affiliate Marketers Alliance. Uh, he began his online marketing career in the mid-1990s. Ian started his own web development company and began managing websites and e-commerce initiatives for small businesses. Ian has gained clients such as the Canadian Federal Government and Team Canada Pastry Chefs. Currently, Ian is a business analyst for Partner Centric, where he oversees ROI analysis and plays a key role in strategic business development. Over the years, Ian has helped many clients succeed at online newsletter marketing. In fact, he runs his own growing email list of clients. Ian now shares these experiences with uh, us tonight so we can... Uh, all start to consider the possibility of growing our own email newsletter. So uh, once again, Ian, welcome to the call. So tell me, Ian, why would you suggest? Would you suggest to uh, someone who may be considering? Would you would you recommend adding an email newsletter to uh, to your website? Well, I think the uh, the short answer for me would be definitely yes. Um, but I think you, you know, as you mentioned, you need to go back to your business model. Um, the first question I would ask is, what are you trying to achieve? Um, in many cases, you know, a newsletter can benefit a website by doing secondary marketing. It, it is my opinion that uh, when, <clears throat> when a visitor visits your site, there has been a cost, whether it be effort, time, or money. Um, in your case, um, you've spent resources in getting that, you know, that eyeball to your website. I, I definitely feel it's a shame you know, to really lose out on the possibility of furthering your relationship with that visitor once they leave. So the short answer is, you know, yes, um, ask for permission to remarket to them via an email newsletter. So with, with your site now, we, we had a good chance to chat about it today, and one of the things that you had mentioned to me is obviously the, the number of subscribers that you've grown your site to or your list to uh, was you know in the I think you said eleven thousand members, and one of the things that we, you and I talked about was that a lot was that a large enough list or was that how how was that how big was that list and you know is it is it you know, would you consider it a success and obviously we both agree that it was a, it was a definitely a success. Maybe you could give us just a little bit of a background about your website and you know how you began to build your email newsletter list and how long ago and just give us a little history on that right absolutely um, <clears throat> the website that, uh, that that I have the email uh, newsletter list running is a health and nutrition website and we started that probably in 98 or 99 or so um, when we first started we had zero people you know zero members on our newsletter list yes uh, it was slow and painful to start it's always slow and painful to start a, a, a newsletter list um, at the very beginning, I wrote some code, I captured the person's email address and name, and I dumped it into my own database. Once we started growing, once we started testing creatives and testing incentives uh, to get visitors to sign up for our free uh, nutrition newsletter, um, we you know, ran into a problem of 
once the list started growing, you know, how do I manage the bounce backs? Yes. How do I manage, you know, people replying to me? Um, we basically outgrew the system that I was able to sort of build in-house for us, and I went and searched for uh, hosted solutions where, um, where companies, all they do is uh, manage your email list. Perfect. I've used quite a few of them, probably two, three of the bigger ones out there, and I finally settled on one that meet our needs. You know, they all have their pros and cons. You have to find out what you know, technical needs that you have and find out which one best suits you. Um, we've been using that system ever, uh, for quite a few years now, and we've you know, grown to a stage of over 10,000, over 11,000 of active users. I think in the olden days, <coughs> uh, when I say olden days, it's the... Uh, late 90s. Funny, it's funny that we can say olden days now on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you figure, okay, you started you, you started your website back in 1998. I mean, back in those days, most people didn't even have an email address at that point. Right. So that I mean, we're talking. I mean, we kind of refer to today a little bit as the Wild West. I mean, that was you. You were still the settlers crossing right. the prairies back in those days. In fact, it was even more of a wild west back then because there was nothing considered, you know, spamming search engines. So I think everybody was spamming search engines to a certain extent <laughs> at the time. Um, so what you had done, so back then, what you had done, you'd actually, because you do have a little bit of a coding background, you'd actually wrote your own scripting and your own, you know, software to manage your your original email list as they began to grow. Right. Yeah, I, I started off writing my own script, very simple, subscribe, unsubscribe. Uh, where I really ran into an issue was dealing with the bounce backs. Um, you know, as your list grows, people are going to you know, drop off uh, from your list <clears throat> due to them not logging back into Yahoo uh, uh, you know, uh, in a certain amount of time, and Yahoo mm -hmm. cuts them off. They leave AOL.com. They use a different provider. So emails are always going to you know, uh, need scrubbing your list. So that was where I ran into a problem. When we got to about you know, 3,000 or 4,000 people, the bounce backs was was getting pretty horrendous, and that's so. So, just for new listeners, maybe you could explain what a bounce back is. Right. Um, there are two types of bounce backs. When you send an email newsletter out, there's a hard bounce back, which means that email doesn't work; um, it no longer exists, uh, or, or there's a technical error. There's a soft bounce back, and those are typically, "Hi, I'm out of the office. You can contact me at a later date." So, I needed a system that I can determine soft and hard bounce backs and not get rid of the people that you know are sending me soft bounce backs. At the same time, you know, scrubbing my list or having an automa automated system to scrub my list for hard bounce backs, that is for email addresses that no longer work. Because so when I'm scrubbing a list, that would actually, does that delete those email addresses? Yes, it actually okay. deletes the email address. Okay. So with this whole idea now, just so people are aware, you, the site that we're talking about that you have this newsletter list on, it is affiliate, it's an affiliate marketing based content information-rich website. That, you know, I learned that today when we had a conversation over lunch. Right. It is definitely a, uh, a content website. In fact, it's more of a publishing company. Um, the website publishes uh, health articles, and um, an affiliate is a small part of it, um, that a small part of the revenue you know, generation uh, process. Um, the site basically generates revenue um, from newsletters, from CPC, CPA, and CPM as well. Okay, so... And this, when you when you began this site, this this is obviously a site that you've developed together with your wife. Yes, this is the site. In fact, my wife was the one that started this site. Uh, it just it started to be, it, the site was basically started um, because there was a lack of information for you know one of the topics that she was interested in, and being a healthcare professional, she wanted to be able to compile that and help other people with it, and that's you know that, that basically took shape in '98, and that's how the website got started. Yeah. So. Obviously, people that are listening, and, and myself included, and yourself, when, when we bring a visitor to our website, obviously we want to maximize our revenues. Because like you said earlier on, it's so true. When, you, when we finally get a visitor to come to our site, that obviously there was a cost involved, whether it was you know the time and effort it takes to build the page and then create the inbound links and move your search your, your page up in the, in the search results so you can inherit that visitor or whether you're actually buying it through paid search. Uh, there, there's definitely a cost involved. So your feeling is that once, because that visitor is now on your site, uh, it's time to you know gather up their name and their email address so that we can, I think you said, continue to market to them. Absolutely. You know, secondary marketing can add a nice um, 
you know, nice mix into your overall marketing mix, whether that be to try and generate revenue, whether you know, your, your, your goal is specifically to drive more traffic back to your website. I think uh, a, a newsletter uh, definitely has a place uh, in the online marketing mix. I, know, I remember when I, was, I actually had a chance to interview Brian Littleton, president of ShareSale there, and he, he'd actually said something very, very similar where he was talking about, you know, especially in the affiliate model, and obviously he's a network, so he's used to dealing with affiliates and merchants on both sides of the, the fence, as are you, because you're also in that in that industry or that side of the industry. So you're 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 on the affiliate manager side and on the uh, on the affiliate side, so you have a very unique perspective. But what Brian had said is he said, you know, it's one thing to bring somebody to your site and then refer them off to a merchant, but he, and then get paid the commission. But he says you will you will increase your and I don't remember the exact phrase he said, but you will your 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 affiliate business will be miles ahead is if you can somehow remind that visitor to come back to see you the next time that they you know need to buy that product so you can now earn the revenue uh, a second and a third time. And he actually went into quite a bit of detail on that. It was an interesting interview. So now you're saying the same thing. Yeah, I can definitely see see you know what Brian's saying. In fact, Brian is a, you know one of the you know smartest guys in the industry that I know. Um, the, the, uh, what he's saying is definitely true. Return traffic is so important nowadays that it's always easier to um, you know bring traffic that's that already knows your site, that's already warm, versus you know finding new traffic. Finding new traffic, we always want to find new traffic. But if that new traffic never stays and comes back, you know they're of no use to you. But you know with time, you know with certain marketing techniques, if you can bring a percentage of the new users back to you, you're going to have that that many more page views on your website. Absolutely. You know, it got me to thinking. We got Bronwyn uh, Bamber listening in, who's just built a tremendous business, and uh, this whole concept of email newsletter she she kind of because i've been watching her and listening about her success it's actually brought this whole concept to me you know this whole idea should i should i put a list on my site should i not and personally i don't have a lot of email lists on a lot of sites and my new sites that i'm developing the sites that i have in in the plans definitely i'm putting together an email newsletter for those sites and it's just going to be part of my overall strategy from now on cuz me looking you know, at Bronwyn and, and hearing the type of traffic that she's bringing in, if she can actually capture, you know, and, and you know, probably not the right word, but you know, maybe it is the right word, and, and get you know a, a percentage of visitors into her list, so the next time she can be continually, you know, touching them, you know, once or twice a month, send out a newsletter to them and keep them in in contact. So I'm assuming that that's basically what you're doing with with your site. How do, how does that work with your site? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> when we bring a <clears throat> when we bring a, uh, a visitor to our site, I think the most important thing in generating newsletter signups is determining your traffic type. When you're on the internet and someone comes to your website, if you have a gardening website, I can only assume that they came to your website via a link from somebody else's garden website or from a search engine somewhere. They're probably looking for gardening information. Yes. If I can get an offer such as um, how to grow the greenest lawn on your street uh, in, a, in an electronic format and you know, use that as an incentive for them to sign up, probably going to get a you know, higher sign-up rate than if I just offer them a very general free gift. Yeah. So I think you know, step number one is really determining your traffic type and getting the right offer in front of them. So you're talking about now you've got your, your software set up, coming up with uh, you know, an incentive for that visitor to now – join your newsletter. Absolutely. Um, it, it's great to give away things that are free, and we can do it very easily uh, with email and you know, with, uh, <clears throat> with Internet uh, and, and websites now. And there's no reason to offer free things uh, to users, users on the Internet. People love free things. In fact, I love free things. I sign up to a bunch of free things all the time. So. <laughs> well, I know, I know with, the, with the site where I sell actually the Affiliate Marketers Handbook, one of the things I've been doing for years, ever since we put the, the handbook together in 2002, is offering a free copy of the uh, table of contents so they can have a look through you know, the first 39 pages to get an idea of what it's about. And obviously when they do that, prior to getting that, they enter their email list or their email uh, address and their name, and then it moves them through to a page. So this idea, have you had a chance to, because I, I know you do a lot of analysis and a lot of testing and a lot of analytics, have you had a chance to you know, play with this whole idea of 
So with, with with your site, you've got obviously your email form on the page, and right next to it, ex- explain how it looks, may possibly, and then the offer that you're giving the uh, visitors when you come to your site. Right. Yeah. Definitely, we've done lots of you know testing and optimization <clears throat> on our on our news uh, newsletter sign up pages, and when we didn't. Uh, you know, give the free incentive, or when we gave the wrong incentive, you, you can see that the conversion rates definitely are not as high as when you find the right offer. Once you sign the, find the right offer, make sure it's prominent. And I think you're, uh, I, I'm going to call this the landing page. This is your newsletter sign-up page. Yes. The landing page needs to be clear. Yeah, it needs to be not cluttered with banners and navigation. Um, I would suggest having a privacy policy in there. Uh, it, it, you may not be able to fit your privacy policy on that page as well, but you definitely want to have a link to your privacy policy. In fact, for all, for all the users out there, you should have a privacy policy on your website telling people um, if you collect cookies, how you, you, know, how you use information. And in fact, it's a, it's a selling point to tell your users that you don't rent, sell, or, or, or give your, you know, the information away to anybody else. It's used solely for the website owner to contact you regarding the things that you wanted to hear in the first place. Absolutely, so important. I mean, nothing worse than, you know, I've seen on some people's, you know, privacy policies where they'll put it next to their email newsletter. You know, you you, you can see even the short little ones. It'll say, "I will never sell, rent, or give away your email address." That's what I want to see. And then I see some of these little, you know, little disclaimers. It'll say, "We will never share." your email address with anyone other than our approved associates. And it's like, no, nope, don't want to put my name there. I mean, who are your approved exactly. associates? You ever joined an email list and then you start getting emails from his buddies? <laughs> I can't stand it. Can't stand it. Ooh, and In just, there, that's right. It's just like, then how do you unsubscribe? So, you know, our approved associates. So I, you know, this whole idea of a, of a privacy policy right up front, I like that. And then, you know this whole idea of you know once you've got it put together, um, just not abusing your list. Just I see it all the time. So, but but back on this idea of the incentive. So in your case, what what, what type of an incentive do you give away? Um, we are a nutrition site, so we're giving away nutrition tips. Um, we've you know, altered a couple of them, and we've found you know, ones that work better and ones that don't. You know, this should always be an evolving process. When you find something that converts well, you can never improve on it if you never try. So you should find other incentive tips, like I was saying about the, the, the gardening website, you know, how to grow the greenest lawn on the street, uh, how to grow flowers so that you know, they don't die over the winter. I'm not a gardener, so I don't know, but those are just examples of different incentives to try. At the end of the day, you need to have enough impressions and, and measure your conversion rate and know which one works best for your traffic type. So, so once you, now you, do you continually play with this, or do you actually, after a while, settle down and pretty much stick with it, or, or is this something that you're always evolving? If I had more time, I would, I would try and test more things, but uh, you know, there's only a certain amount of hours in the day. And currently, we're getting about a 60% conversion rate from, from users that are landing on our website, i.e. users that are landing on our website and seeing the newsletter offer, clicking on that link. When they get to the sign-up form, I can measure that about 60% of those people are signing up. So we're pretty happy with that at the moment. So is that 60% of the total visitors or 60% of the people that actually click through to the newsletter page? It, yeah, it, that, it's, it's the latter. 60% of the people who actually get to the newsletter page and see the offer. Okay, so now now that they've done that, they've come through, they've landed on your site, they've clicked through, they've joined your newsletter, now now what happens? Do they get a confirmation? Right. Um, the free nutrition tips comes in a autoresponder to the person who signed up, so they'll get that right away. Okay. And so there's, there's basically two ways to do it. One, you can run a double opt-in list. One, you can just run a normal list. Okay. So maybe could you explain the differences? Absolutely. A normal list is, is when somebody signs up to your newsletter, they're put in right away, uh, and they're active in your list. A double opt-in list requires that the end user puts in their name and their uh, email address the system will send them a verification email. They need to open that email up, click on a link, and actually activate uh, their subscription. This is basically uh, the double opt-in system uh, preventing you know, other people from using your email address and signing you up for weird things. This really enables that uh, the system to tell that you are really, you know, um, you are really, <coughs> excuse me, you are really who you say you are, uh, and you know. So other people aren't signing you up for their list. Right. 
So with which 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 of the two methods do you recommend? Um, double opt-in is always a cleaner list. Uh, I've run both types of lists, and you know, depending on what what situation, uh, I like the double opt-in list. Reason for that is it cleans, you know, it keeps your list clean. People who use tests or fake emails uh, aren't input into the list. And now, having said that, if you also run some sort of paid, you know, pay-per-click campaign, you're losing out a lot of sort of um, potential sign-ups um, when you run a double opt-in uh, 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 email list. It's, it's known that double opt-in lists are, uh, do not always convert at 100%. When you have 100 real people who sign up to a double opt-in list, you're never going to get 100 people who open the right email and click on that link. One, um, they may not get the verification email. Two, they may get the verification email, not read it properly, and never click on the link. Three, they may click on the link, and the server at the time was down, and they never get verified. So depending on you know, the, the, the scenario you're in, a double opt-in list will always give you a cleaner list. Okay. With the, you know, there's a few, there's a few things that come to mind, a few questions that I'd like to ask you along the way. Um, obviously, as far as content and the development of content, you know, being in information-rich sites, site that you develop, and we're, we're pretty much in the same vein over this side, we're always looking to develop content, and obviously now with the newsletter, there's another area of content development. What, what exactly do you, you know, what, how often and what do you send out to your list? Right. Um, the newsletter is um, quite easy. I shouldn't say it's very easy. It's somewhat easy for us in that um, our goal for the newsletter is to drive traffic back to the website. Yes. Um, we're always generating new content on the website. Um, we send our newsletters out twice a month, and in every newsletter we include three or four new articles uh, of the most newest articles, and we drive traffic via the newsletter back to those pages. So we always, we always have content for the newsletter because we're ongoingly creating um, content for the website anyway. So out with these pages, so on your website you go, and you go ahead and you create a, you know, a brand new article. Then that becomes one of the topics for your, for your newsletter. That's right. The newsletter, let's say, would incl include three or four of the most recent articles. It would just include you know, very simple, one nice image, um, an intro paragraph, probably two or three, you know, four sentences long, and a link to send them back. This is directly to that page will find the balance of the article. Because our goal is to drive traffic to the website. So now, with you, you mentioned in the in the uh, in the email newsletter, you've got an image. So one of the questions I was going to ask you: Do you recommend, you know, using an, an in the old days where we we're all based on text editors? But do you recommend an HTML newsletter or a plain text? And I think you probably just answered that. Maybe you could talk about your experience with you know the look of the newsletter. Sure. We went through a phase, um, actually quite a few phases over the years. Um, I, I definitely remember the days you know, of, of what you said of, of people sending out only text uh, email newsletters. To this day, um, because we know our demographics really well, we send 100% HTML newsletters. Now, there are some email system uh, management systems out there that allow users to, to select whether they want text-based or HTML-based newsletters, yes. in which case, um, the person sending out the newsletter would have to do twice as much work, um, you know, make sure the text um, email is set up properly, make sure the HTML version is, is properly. To save time on our part, we've um, moved 100% to HTML, and over the last you know, five, six years of doing it, we've never had one complaint. So, <laughs> so they, they much prefer, yeah. I, I, and again, I that's agree. based on our demographics. If you're into a very high-tech uh, programming you know, sort of community, some of those, you know, users would probably want their email in text. <laughs> yeah, probably. It'll good old techies. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I agree. I mean, I I use Gmail these days, although it's been acting up lately, starting to annoy me. But uh, obviously, Gmail is all HTML. And meaning for those maybe that don't understand HTML, simply we can now when the email comes in, it's a picture. You know, it's an image. They can insert, you know, photos and any kind of uh, graphical component they want to it, so it actually pretties up the newsletter nicely. But I, I can't imagine that the vast, and then you probably just confirmed it, the vast majority of people now, their email programs would definitely be HTML. 
Right, and and just to add on to that, absolutely. You know, most people will have HTML capabilities. The ones that don't choose not to. So it's not like they can't view it. Right. And um, there's, you know, Outlook is probably the most uh, used email client out there right now. Um, you really need to test your HTML newsletters because they may look a little different in Outlook than in Gmail, than in Yahoo, than in Hotmail. They all run their own sort of CSS and their own way of um, highlighting text, um, um, you know, deciphering the HTML code. So you really need to do testing uh, on your newsletter template to make sure that it shows up properly in all those mediums. So that's probably a good time to talk about the software that, that you use to send out this these emails so that you can actually test it. So uh, you mentioned in the early days, in the olden days, that you started with a little script that you uh, had developed yourself, and then you evolved and you've tried a few newsletter management software programs, I guess for lack of a better word. And what have you settled on and what, what actually do you use today? Right. I've actually settled on a system called AWeber. Um, used a few of them out there. Like I say, you know, some of them are very powerful. Again, this was the one that met uh, our needs, um, and uh, we've been using it for a few years now, and it's and it's worked really well. So, what do you? What, maybe you could explain some of the features. What you like about it? Sure, sure, absolutely. How much does it cost? Is it a? Right. You know, right. you to buy the software. Is it, or right. is it a um, This fee? is a hosted uh, email management system, meaning that it doesn't run locally on your computer. It's hosted uh, on the aweber.com website. We, I like that in the first place because I, my machine doesn't need to be on. I don't need to pull you know, emails back uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to get subscription uh, uh, status. But you know, again, it depends on um, depends on your business needs. If that's what you you require and you need in the uh, the customization, maybe that's you know one route to go. But uh, I settled on Aweber. Uh, they allow me to um, run autoresponders um, right away. So if someone signs up to my newsletter, I can send them an auto an automated autoresponder uh, right away, letting them know thank you for signing up. Here's the free gift um, that you get for signing up to our newsletter. It allows for broadcasts, so I can do unlimited broadcasts every month. Broadcasts are, you know, basically doing your newsletter blast. Yeah. I do mine twice a month. Okay. Uh, not only that, what I really like about the system is um, it. They are very strict on how clients of theirs, meaning me, on how I can get names into the system. I've used other systems that are less lax and allow you to upload um, thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of. Uh, 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 email addresses. Yes. Over time, that boggles the system. You know, that bogs the system down, and it just and, it, and the system just becomes painfully slow to manage. This with this system, um, when I when, when I queue, usually within half an hour it'll go out. Sometimes it might take an hour, but within half an hour to to, to do a blast, you know, of our size is fantastic. Um, in fact, the biggest selling feature I would say for Aweber, you know, I don't work for them. It sounds like I should be, but <laughs> um, the biggest selling feature for Aweber is they allow uh, they allow the end user to run a double opt-in system to you know to give you that clean list. In addition to that, the best part I love about Aweber is that um, when their system will automatically unsubscribe bounces, hard bounces from your list if they bounce uh, three times or more in less than 60 days. So in two months' time, if you send out four newsletters and that person bounced three times, that's you know the system will automatically know it's a hard bounce. The email probably doesn't work anymore because it bounced three out of the last four times in the last two months. Right. They're going to automatically subscribe it. That you know that really saved tons of time in troubleshooting and and uh, and weeding out all the email addresses that didn't work. In the old days, like I say, I, I wanted the list to be as big as possible because it sounded great. Yeah. But today, I know that my open rate, you know, my, my a high open rate and a high activity rate is what I want. It's not, you know, the size of the list. It's the right. quality of the list that counts. So when you say open rate, you're talking about like when that email actually lands in their email box out of the all the 11,000 that went out, exactly how many of those emails were opened? Right. Because we run a very clean list. We, in fact, we used to run a double opt-in list, and now we use Aweber to run the double opt-in list. Now we've moved over to a not double opt-in list. But you know, like I say, their system allows us to keep our list clean um, by subscribing people who you know bounce more than three times in, in in two months. We actually get an open rate of about 65%. That's awesome. That's that's you know it, that's pretty good. I've seen higher, I've seen lower, but we're very very happy with that. Very, very Is that something you've obviously had to to practice and improve upon over the years? 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, before we were before I was able to scrub out you know these email lists, I was getting an open rate of you know ten twenty percent. Didn't know that you know some of the email addresses didn't work. So that was that was that was really you know uh, uh, affecting um, uh, my my uh, statistics. So what do you find? You know, is there anything that comes to mind? You know, what's the difference when you obviously if you're sending them out? Some campaigns work well. Some obviously not so well, and vice versa. Is there anything that you that stands out that you know? Okay, this works. You know, and when I send out my my email to my list, if I do this, I get a pretty good return. Right. Um, there are two sort of business indicators that I use for email marketing. One is the open rate. I believe that the open rate is determined by the subject line. The better your subject line is, the more targeted it is you know, to the season, to the end user, the higher the open rate. That's what I've seen. The better your messaging inside your email is going to garnish a better click-through rate. When you offer the right person, you offer the right ad copy, that's going to incent them to click. So open rate uh, is determined by the subject line, and click-through rate is, op- is determined by the content inside the email. This content, again, in the email, so you say there's a couple of articles. How would you, how would you or how do you structure your, the, the look? Obviously, you said it's an HTML. I'm assuming AWeber, do they have templates and stuff that you can use? Yes, they have templates. Uh, we use our own custom templates, so the newsletter looks somewhat like our website. You know, it has our top navigation bar. Um, it's a very simple... Uh, 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 news that are set up. There's a top navigation bar. Um, there is uh, three or four articles usually, and I typically like to put a, a sponsor on a, you know, somewhere in the newsletter. But I, you know, make it clear that this is a sponsor. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and what's at the bottom of the newsletter is our privacy policy that links back to our website, you know, letting them know that we're above board. Here's what we're doing with your information. How much time would you say it takes you to manage? Yeah, you know your your newsletter list on a monthly basis. Um, we blast twice a month, so you know the few days before the deadline, um, the chief editor would get all the articles ready. Um, our designer would create that HTML email for us, and the AWeber system probably takes. You know, we've been doing it for so long. We're probably pretty quick now. Um, 10, 15 minutes, because what we want to do is load it up, yep. then a test to ourselves, make sure all the links are working and everything looks right before we actually queue it up in the system. Yes. And then you mentioned earlier that then you test. You, then you test. Do you send a copy right. to yourself first so you can have a look at it? Right. When we first, every time we change templates, we test rigorously in Outlook, in Gmail, in Yahoo, in Hotmail. Um, now that we know, you know, everything is pretty stable, and the only thing that's swapped out is the sponsor and the article text and the images. Yes, uh, it's it's pretty simple now. We we do most of our testing uh, in Outlook, and that's Microsoft Outlook. Right, right. Actually, yeah, uh, opening up the email in Outlook to test. Right. Okay. Very interesting. So now you'd mentioned that a person comes to your site of the brand new people that come in, you get around sixty percent. I think you said the. That click on the link, or oh, sorry, of the sixty percent that click on your newsletter link that takes you to their newsletter sign up page, sign up for your newsletter. Then the autoresponder goes out, probably welcomes them to your list. And every couple of weeks they get an email. What what would you say? Maybe you know the number. Maybe it's it's a guess. But if you send out your email, how many of those people now? You said approximately. I think you said sixty five percent will actually open the email. How many of those people that open it, can you track to see how many actually clicked on a link and came back to the site? Absolutely. Uh, AWeber has a function where when you blast your newsletter out, it will take every one of your links and, in, and, and you know, do a special encoding in them so that you can go in, log into AWeber, look at the blast that you did two weeks ago, and see exactly how many times each of your links inside your newsletter uh, was tracked. Some systems out there, you can do that, but it's manual. With AWeber, it's automatic. You just load it up, click Q, the system will do the rest, do all the tracking, do all the reporting for you. And away it goes. So if, if you wouldn't mind sharing the numbers of that 65% of the 11,000 that you send out to, how many actually would end up back on your site typically? Um, off, offhand, I don't know because um, when, you, when you calculate click-through rates, I know how many people click on the first article at the top and the second article the third the fourth, but I'm not sure if that person clicked on all four or if they just clicked on four uh, uh, or you know, the first one. Right. So it's tough to give a you know a sort of a click-through rate, but um, 
of the people who open, I can I, I can see that they're all very very active. And when you you know find the when you send them the right article, you're going to see your page views increase because of that dramatically. Yes. With the Aweber system, do they now? How do if let's say I've got a page of content here, and I want to obviously I want to set this page up to uh, be my newsletter landing page. So this is where they actually sign up for the newsletter. Does a member give you some code that actually gives you the box where you, the user can enter their name and their email address? How, how, how does that exactly work? Absolutely. Um, when when you sign up <clears throat> to be a be their customer, you log into an admin area. It's very, very intuitive. Um, you go through a couple of um, you know, steps of instructions. It spits out the HTML code for you. All you do is copy and paste that HTML code onto your web pages, upload it to your server, and everything uh, will track properly from there on. And when people sign up, they actually, you know, their information is actually you know, gets dumped into Aweber, and um, you know, and, and the end user gets sent back to your site, thanking them for signing up to your newsletter. So for them, so that's not like it's, it's pretty simple to actually set it all up. If you wanted to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, offer them an incentive. So now you've taken the code from a member, you've placed it on your page. I imagine you can put it on as many pages as you want. Absolutely, as many pages as you want. So if you wanted to put it on the top right hand corner of your home page, or top right hand corner of every page, or just set up a, just a single dedicated page, you could do that. Absolutely, you can put it in as many places as you want. And if there, are, you know, some places, let's say at the top navigation bar where you don't have enough room for that, mm -hmm. you can put a link or a button there. When they click, you can drive the end user to the to the page that actually has the full information and and the sign up form. So if we okay, so now if we said okay, we now we wanted to develop a little incentive here. So when somebody, you know, give them an, give that visitor an incentive to join our email list, we could come up with a little special report, a PDF. You know, maybe a little audio, something that we're going to give them as an incentive. How do you work that? Is it simply you put you you put your you obviously the A member sign up form on your page, and beside it you put a little image of you know get a little, nice little book cover, or whatever you're going to give them. Once they enter their name and their email address and they hit join, obviously that goes into the A Weber system. How do you then deliver the 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 goods that you just promised that you'd give them? Right. Um, the easiest way would be to set up, let's say if you had a PDF, you would set up that PDF to be attached to your autoresponder. That's sort of your thank you for signing up, you know, here's your gift email. So it's just as an attachment in the email that's being sent back to them automatically. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Perfect. Is there the provisions that if you preferred to set up a page on your website where you had a picture of the uh, the product and then a little link that they could download it from your page. Can you set? I guess in your autoresponder, you could put a link back to the page where they can now grab it as well. That's right. The autoresponder uh, is, is something definitely good to set up. You don't have to have one, but it's great to set up so that the person knows. You know, they sort of feel the warm, warm and fuzzy from you that hey, you know, this person actually realized you know I signed up to their list, and. Um, the, the the thank you page can actually be on your website, so you can you know send them to a page that says thank you for signing up. Um, you know here is uh, click on this link to download your free PDF or whatever the incentive uh, may be. Yes, terrific. So now, what's the what does it cost to use the a a Weber service? I think the last time I checked, it was something like nineteen ninety five, so twenty twenty dollars a month, uh, and that's for up to ten thousand contacts. Okay. Like I say, you know, so that's what you say. It's a hosted service. So the, the actual the software resides on the Aweber, probably Aweber.com. Right. Exactly. And then you just pay a monthly subscription, and then they, and everything's handled from there. How long would it take somebody that's and obviously is a guess, but typically somebody that's got some basic skills on on doing this. How long would it take them to sign up and then maybe get the the subscription form placed on or on their page? Um, I, I think it would be very, you know, having having been an, a long time Aweber user, I think it would be very very easy. They have live chat, um, they have a toll free number that you can call, and uh, the 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 tech support there is fantastic. They're uh, they can get get you all the information that you need very very quickly and and get you up and going very very quickly. Awesome. So, I guess so for incentives then for people that may be thinking of incentives, they could put a special little report together, maybe hire somebody at Elance to write a little. You know something that obviously is of great value that's relevant to their to their visitors. They could then join Aweber, place the little 
uh, subscription form on their website. Any any recommendations on where to place that form? You mentioned you've got a dedicated page for it. Do do you um, put it anywhere else on your site, or how do, how do you promote your newsletter on your your own personal website? Right, I do it a few ways. Um, I have a dedicated page that hosts uh, uh, the the free offer and the sign up, but I also have links going to it via. Um, banners, 728 by 90 on my own website, uh, via text links, uh, and via sort of smaller button banners. And I, you know, AWeber allows you to, with some coding, AWeber allows you to track which is the most effective way. Um, for instance, if the person read to the bottom of my article and clicked on that link to join the uh, uh, newsletter, I would know. So I can see in the back end which links you know, works the best for my user type. So if somebody wanted to... Uh get everything set up, they're probably, you know, it sounds like a relatively painless process. And then you're saying once you get you get this under your belt and taking care of this each month is not a lot of time once you've got the content. Obviously, it always gets back to the content. And then uh, off you go. Right, absolutely. absolutely. Anything, else, anything else that comes to mind that you'd like to share with your experience with newsletters? Well, I should just encourage your use to, uh, users to, you know, be patient, you know, when your list grows, and keep testing. Um, I, I can remember the first time that I nailed the message perfectly and conversion rates basically soar through the roof. That, you know, uh, bitten by the bug since then and, uh, and, and can't stop doing it now. So <laughs> keep testing and uh, keep working on it. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, this whole business. It, 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 you know, there's just so many angles and aspects to it that, you know, it's just a matter of, of digging in and, you know, and if you like doing it, like obviously you can, I can hear it in your voice that you, this is something you enjoy doing, as do I. And I, and I know the, the listeners, you know, they got to, you know, they, it's, it's it's fun. People think we're crazy, but I think this is a blast. <laughs> I mean, to me, sending out an, an, an email newsletter, which I do is, you know, and you, it absolutely bombs. It's like, okay, hang on a second here. What did I do wrong? And it's something that I missed. Or something that I kind of goofed up, and then, like you said, when you nail it, whoa, that's cool. Right, exactly, exactly. So, Ian, you know what? I, I want to probably wrap it up here. I want to thank you for uh, taking the time tonight. It's uh, it's always good to uh, get somebody else on the line that has real life experience that doesn't mind sharing it with uh, other people. Uh, it's uh, much appreciated. I know the listeners would have had a a good time, and you shared a lot of good information. Thanks for that information on AWeber, and thanks for the information you shared about your own site and how you go about, obviously, running a very successful newsletter from uh, your your own website. And congratulations on doing that. Thanks very much. And again, thank you for having me, James. Um, uh, it was a blast. Thank you. Awesome. And for the rest of you guys that are listening, that uh, you know that are live, we'll meet you back in the conference room. For those that may be listening to as a recording that are in your car or out and about, uh, good luck to you if you decide to start a, an email newsletter, and we will uh, see you on the next Coffee Talk. Bye for now. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.